Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Carlos Dominguez and in today's video I'm going to try to explain how I was able to connect this laser diode to Mac 3 and the settings that you had to change on the software so the laser will work with either pulse width modulation or pull power and also how to generate the G-code and most importantly the post-processor modifications that you had to do so the laser will actually cut properly, turns on and off, and uh, does a good job with the material. So hopefully I can explain this the best I can, how I did it with my machine, and will be helpful for you if you're trying to install one of these things on your machine. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, I got this laser diode through eBay and it cost me around $130. It's still the same price. It's been a while since I bought it. It came with the glasses and the sheet metal. And this is right here, it's 15 watts blue laser. But actually, if you look at the specifications right here in the bottom, it says that it's 15 watts pulse and an average of 5.9 watts uh, continuous use. Very well, so this is a picture of the laser diode. And so you can see it's got this connector right here for the power input. It works with 12 volts. Uh, this other connector right here is to hook up to the computer through a port and you can either use a TTL or analog. You make that selection with the switch here. This wire that you see here goes around and comes to the fan and finally these last wires here is the power for the laser diode. Okay before we proceed I wanted to show you a couple of things here on the description of the product. One of them is the PWM frequency is less than 9 kilohertz. The other one is says that the analog modulation, it might be related to controlling the laser with some sort of potentiometer, a varying the voltage from 0 to 5 volts, and thus varying the intensity of the laser. Now coming here to the Mach 3 instruction menu, if we see on charge pump and pulse monitor, we can see that the software will output 12.5 kHz to control devices. Now we come here to spindle control, there's three ways that we can control the spindle, in this case the laser. One of them is through the spindle relay, we'll turn it on and off. Simple as that without varying any speed or intensity. The second one is the motor control by step and direction pulses, kind of like controlling a stepper motor, but in this case you control a servo. If you have a servo as a spindle, and we're not going to use that. Uh, the third one will be the motor control by a pulse width modulated signal, which is exactly what we're going to do. By the way, all of this I'm going to demonstrate using the laser on the machine itself. Okay, so for this part of the video, I really need to show you with the machine how to change the settings, because we're going to visualize how the pulse width modulation works using this old oscilloscope when we change the intensity the, or the spindle override to change the intensity of the laser. So let me uh, first of all open the configure forcing pins and we go to spindle setup. Uh, one of the things that I want you to see is on PWM base frequency is set to 250. Okay so that frequency is uh, 250 pulses per second. We can go as slow as five pulses per second or around 4,000 pulses per second. So it's like four kilohertz. Uh, right now we're just going to stick with 250 pulses per second and the minimum pulse width modulation is 1% of that and that allows us to not to go completely off on the laser. It goes to almost zero but uh, is 1% and we have here uh, selected the use spindle motor output and PWM control. Now here we have enabled the spindle relays. We're using output number two. And if we have here the output signals, uh, you can see that output number one is active and output number two here is selected. Okay, so I got the pin number one selected on the breakout board on the parallel port. So it's pin number one, which I'm using to control the laser. Okay, so we come to spindle setup and we have the 250 pulses per second and we are leave it like that. And we are going to okay and reset. So now I didn't want to use the laser for that because you can actually not see it and then I had to wear the glasses and all that. So 
we're going to use the oscilloscope to, to see the signal. If I turn the laser on, and right now it's around 50%, we can see that we got almost the same on the bottom line, about half of what the top line is. So it's actually around 50% in between zero volts and five volts. So if we come here and move the slider, then you can see if we go 100%, the five volts increase and the zero volts decrease. And it does the opposite when I go decrease the intensity. So now it's less turned on because the pulses on the top are the five volts that turn the laser on through the controller for the laser. If I reset it, it resets it to 100%, but we can change the intensity right here, and you can see how it changes the modulation pulse width because it changes the width of the pulse. Okay, so if I turn it off, so it goes back to zero. Let's go back to configure ports and pins, spindle setup, and instead of using the PWM, we're gonna use full power, which it'll turn it on to five volts. No variation on the intensity will occur. So now we select that, we reset it. Now if we turn it on, you can see that the line jumped to five volts, but it won't change the intensity or it won't go up and down if we vary the intensity of the spindle uh, override here on the software. Once you turn it on, full power or off. All right, so let's go back to configure, percent pins, spindle setup, and let's reselect that PWM. Okay, so you're asking, well, okay, the PWM base frequency is 250. Well, you can change it. You cannot really see it at 250 pulses per, per second because it's too fast for your eye, right? I think you can probably distinguish when it's like 25 pulses per second, maybe. So let's change it to five and see what we see. Apply. Okay, all right, we're gonna reset it. Now we're gonna turn the laser on. Now you can see that it's pulsing up and down five times a second. See if I decrease right here my timing on the oscilloscope, then you can see the, the pulse just going by time up and down from zero to five volts. So that's how you know that it's actually changing the frequency. Uh, if I come here and turn it off there. Okay, so let me go to configure ports and pins and let's change that frequency again to maybe 25 instead of five and apply it. Okay, reset and turn it on. Now you can see that it's actually uh, jumping 25 times a second. So we can increase this and we can actually see the figure of the square wave there. Kind of, this is an old oscilloscope, so it's not very <laughs> controllable for that, but uh, it works. So yeah, that's, that's the, the way the, you can change actually the frequency for varying the power with the laser diode. So, that's how the pulse width modulation works on controlling the, the laser dial. So turn it off and it goes back to zero. All right, so let me put this back where it's supposed to be. For some pins, spindle set up, and I like to have it 250. And apply, reset. If I turn it on here, it is you can even see it, it's, you just see a constant speed. So, but there are the uh, pulses that I can change them from zero to full. All right. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you how the laser is controlled by the software. Now let's go inside and I'll try to explain about the G-code how to generate it, and then after that, we're gonna analyze the post processor as uh, the programming that you have to do to make that G code special for this uh, laser engraver. So let's go inside. So before we create any G code, we have to make the tool, in this case, the laser, 
So we had to enter some data into the tool database because we're going to use carbon bit as a laser. So we got our laser module here. We will put up a laser and the dimensions for that ray will be indicated right here on focal length from 15 millimeters to 50, like it says here on the, on the specifications. And the spot diameter, which is this part right here, would be 0.12 millimeters. 0.12 millimeters will uh, be four thousandths of an inch. Instead of 0 0.004, we're gonna do 0 0.020 or 20 thousandths of an inch. Okay, so I got these vectors here, my logo, and we're gonna use them to create a toolpath. And this is gonna be a quick engraving toolpath. I'm going to select first the tool that I'm gonna use. In this case, a laser. The important thing here is. The flat diameter, which is what well, already determined to be how uh, we're going to use 20 thousandths of an inch on 0 0.02. The pass depth, we can control how many passes through this setting right here. So we can tell it eight passes, two, two passes, one pass, whatever. The spindle speed is what controls the power on the laser. So if we select 100, it'll be 100% power. If we select 40, it'll be 40 or whatever you select here. And very important, the feed rate. I discovered that having 11 inches a minute for this particular laser module seemed to work fine. So we just apply these settings, OK, and we got our tool. And what I was telling you is the number of passes here. Usually it cuts within six to eight passes on a 16 of an inch black acrylic. So as you can see, it's not very powerful. So we got the tool selected. Uh, we're going to do eight passes. The tool depth is 0 0.02, although it doesn't matter because uh, it doesn't move up and down. We're going to call it quick engrave laser. So I'll select all these vectors and I'll calculate it. And now I created the laser tool path for this engraving. Now I can come here and if I want to see it, and the piece of material, here's the tool pad selected, and we're gonna preview the selected tool pad. And it just marks it, right? So now the next thing to do is we're gonna save the tool pad to the desktop, and we're gonna use this post processor, which uh, I call CMD Laser No Z. It's a text file. We're gonna save this tool pad, and now we have our tool pad here. And now we can send this to the to the laser engraver. Uh, we're gonna take a look of it. And here is the quick engrave laser tool path. Very well. To get the post processor file, we come here to the JTEC Photonics page or website. Going to software will bring us here to the Vectric laser post processor and we got several options here depending on what machine you have in this case uh, we are gonna use the Mac 3 and they got two files one for inches and one for millimeters uh, as your preference so I click on it and then I can highlight the whole thing right click and copy we open notepad and just paste it here Anyway, so I got the file here, and what this post processor is, it's just a short file that converts the G code for your particular machine. In this case, the laser, we don't want any movement on the Z axis because we don't need to. The laser will keep the focus to a certain focal length. So the first thing that is here on this post-processor there's information about who created the file and who's been modifying it through the years then it's got a post-processor name which uh, will show up on the list of post-processors on your Vectric program either Vicar Pro or Aspire so whatever is in quotations here will show on the list and yeah, the file extension is a txt file or text file and in this post-processor the units are inches then here is like line terminating characters like the carriage return something like that 
and the numbers start from zero to the big number there. Okay, and here is a variable formatting. We don't need to know this stuff, but uh, Aspire or Vicarb, if you go to the help section here, there is a post-processor editing guide that you can use and it'll show exactly what the program does like what does it do right and the variables and this stuff needed to modify if you're interested to do that okay the next part is the the header is begins the header and this information in quotations will show up on your screen on mac3 whatever you have selected there will show here as that header information and then there's the commands to begin moving the machine a slow move and rapid move and this is the rapid move g0 code to go to those coordinates x and y and then this is a feed move it will take in count the feed rate that you program into your tool and you go at feed rate move to those coordinates clockwise arc moves at those counterclockwise arc moves and the retract mode to turn the laser off and I'm missing here the plunge move right so here's my uh, post processor and we had to modify a little bit or I had to modify a little bit it's the same thing for uh, what, what I was analyzing on the other one but the post processor name I changed so it'll show a CMD laser no Z stakes file same txt file extension in inches and everything is the same except that I don't use the M1, M10P1 command here. Everything is the same there except the plunge move. Whenever I want the laser turn on, I use M3 with the spindle setting. The retract move will be MO5. Then the footer of the file is MO5 and goes to home and M30 is the end of the line. So here's a quick and great laser toolpath that we created just a few minutes ago. So it gets all this information and puts it on, on the screen on Mach 3 here, right? There. Then it begins the move from X0 to Y0 at feed speed and it goes there and turns on the laser with the spindle at 100. And then it starts marking, engraving until it finishes that vector it turns the laser back on and so on and so forth until the end of the file and it goes to the end turns it off goes to uh, x0 y0 and m30 as the end of the line so basically this is how the post processor makes uh, the g code show up here on the file and then how mac3 will use it to move the tool and do the job. Very well, so the last thing to do is to save the post processor to the programs applications data file folder on the post processor folder. Remember that this is a notepad which is a text editor so it's gonna save it as a text file so when we do save it we have to save it as whatever name you give it, like CMD laser, no Z, dot pp. And in that way, it'll save it to the uh, applications data folder on my post processor, or you can save it to the post processor file with the list of the, the rest of them. So all files here is the rest of all the post processor files and you would save it to it. And then you had to make a copy and put it into my PP 
or my post processor. That way it'll show on the on the programs uh, folder, on the programs uh, selection list. Now, if it doesn't show the first time, it's because you have to restart the program. You have to restart the program if it doesn't show on this list. And once you do that, it will show the next time you open the program. So, so this is kind of like the big picture uh, of how these post processors work. If there's any doubts or concerns, maybe uh, you can tell me in the comments. For this video, I think that's going to be all that I will do.